away out of it. Marcus Parks here. Uh, thank you for checking us out. I trust all is well your side. So um, in this video, I'll be talking about the electrical certificate of compliance as prescribed in the electrical installation regulations of 2009. It falls under the Occupational Health and Safety Act of South Africa. Right. So the electrical installation regulations is freely available online. Um, so you can download it and read through it on your own. Uh, and I hope it will give you a better understanding when, when, when you have to deal with electrical contractors or electricians or, you know, uh, say if you want, you, you're you planning a, a renovation or anything or you overseeing properties and stuff, just to give you that, that, that regulatory understanding when, when dealing with electrical service providers, right? But in this video, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the, the certificate of compliance first. So this is a, this is a, a sample copy of the certificate. And I think we'll only do this in this video. And then the flip side is the test report. So that's the actual testing. Um, we'll touch on that in another video, right? Um, so when we, before we start with the certificate of compliance, we need to look at the responsibility for the electrical installation. This is an extract from the electrical installation regulation. So, like I said, we're not going to go through it by word by word. It's just you as the property owner, owner of the premises, right? It, it, it's your responsibility to, to, to ensure that the contractor or the electrician you hire are suitably qualified and competent to do the inspection for you or the electrical work that you require, right? And you can do that by asking the electrician for the Department of Labor um, registration number, which is a small little card, laminate card, that will state what, whether they are electrical test at the single phase, the uh, installation electrician or master electrician. And I'm mean, like, they should be proud to show it to you if, if you ask for that. Um, I would. I, I can't wait for somebody to ask me so I can show them my card. Um, and also, if it's an electrical contractor, they've got a contractual registration. It's a letter you get from the Department of Labor to say you, you're a registered electrical contractor. Um, you can also ask for that number or the letter. I can show you the letter. And at least you know that the, the person or the company is suitably qualified. The work for you. Huh? Um, so, with the issuing of the certificate of compliance, again, I'm not going to go word for word, line for line, but it's just I look at this first line it says, No person other than the registered person may issue a certificate of compliance. So, the registered persons, three classes of reg reg registration. It's the electrical tester for single phase. We basically is limited to signing off. Um, single phase installations. And then there's the installation electrician. You can do any type of installation except for specialized installation, which is hazardous installations, explosive environments, etc. And then there's the master electrician, obviously, that does everything, right? Um, so here is an extract from SANS 10142. Basically, if you look at it, if you look at single phase type of installation. Single phase uh, may be installed by electrical contractor, any person under the control of a registered person. So we go in single phase. Yeah, obviously you're going to be a registered, you're going to be installation electrician, you're going to be a single phase tester, you're going to be a master electrician. But the test report and certificate of compliance may be issued only by electrical tester for single phase or installation electrician, or master electrician, right? So here's the interesting part. Say if you were a single phase tester, technically, if we go according to this Annex M, DC. You could put DC, so solar installation is DC, or inverter. If somebody's connecting your inverter, and, and, and they say, no, no, they're gonna issue you a certificate of compliance, technically, it's not valid, because they're a single phase tester, and a single phase tester, they're not issue you a certificate of compliance for installing your inverter or your solar system, right? So yeah, that's something to, to bear in mind, right? 
I'm not going to go too much into specialized inhalation because it's a hazardous medical explosive petroleum. That's it's more industrial as such. And then if we look at, at this line here, any person who undertakes to perform electrical installation work on behalf of any other person, but excluding an employee of such first mentioned person, is legally required to register as an electrical contractor. So this is also in the electrical installation regulations. That's why you, as a contractor, you need to register with the Department of Labor. All right? That's the law. So, so if you are soliciting a alcohol tree or whatever else to do electrical work for you, I'm not saying they can't do the work, but technically it's against the law because it makes it in sense one on four two in the electrical installation regulations, all right? Um, okay, cool. And then what do we got here? No person should commence installation work which requires a new supply increase or modification of the electrical supply capacity unless the supply has been notified there of in the forms of annex export. Yeah, it's not so valuable. Okay. okay. So here we go. This is this is the top part now of the electrical certificate of compliance. So you can see declaration by a registered person. So you're going to put your name there, your ID number, and it says a registered person declared that I personally carried out the inspection and testing of the electrical installation prescribed in the attached test report as per requirements of. So either it's a brand new installation, both, you tick that. It's an existing installation for transfer purposes. You go to inspect an existing house, make sure everything's up to spec, or you've added a new part to an existing house. So you're going to tick those boxes, right? So just getting back to this declaration here. So, you know, that's what comes back to if you, if, if somebody's coming to do an inspection, you're going to ask for that proof of competence, that Department of Labor registration, because there's no point. Uh, the registered person is sitting somewhere at the office and he sends the renters or the or the assistant or the alternate to come to the inspection. He's just telling, oh, just check this net, give me that readings, give me that readings, and bring it to me and I'll sign it for the office. So, so that's where that comes in. So with the responsibility of, of, uh, of the home owner or one of the premises to check that that person is actually doing that inspection. Right? Um, and then obviously this is the where you put in your registration number, date of registration, and you pick. You either electrical test of single phase, your installation electrician, or your master electrician. And you put your address there, your telephone number, your cell phone number, your fax number, your email address. In case you don't want to pick up the phone and there's a lot of issues once the new people move in and they want to know who signed with the certificate, you know, at least they can go find you, right? Um, okay, testing, testing one, two, three, yeah. So when it comes to testing, all right, if, if, if you look at, if you look at companies that do compliance testing as a business, I always wonder how, how you can charge, how you can charge 550 bucks for, for compliance testing, because it's going to take you a lot more than that. If you look at what, what is the standard rate for the legal contractor? Um, it's 550 per hour, then the testing is not going to take you an hour, right? If you look at the things you have to do, if we look at continuity of bonding, right? Three bedroom house, if you've got 10 socket outlets and you have to now check the earth on each socket outlet, this is just continuity of bonding. You're going to check it from the main earth bar to the earth pin of each socket outlet. So you're going to run your, your earth lead up to each socket outlet and you're going to capture all this information because you're going to make sure that it falls within these specs and you're going to record it somewhere so you can have proof you've done it. All right? um, that's going to cost you more than an hour. So how are you going to do this for 550? I struggle to understand that. Right? And that's just one of the tests. Besides the resistance of the earth continuity conductor, you're going to do a polarity test on each socket outlet. Um, you're going to check the voltage at each socket outlet. What's the spec? And these are all prescribed in, in SANS 101.4, section 8. There's quite a few tests to do. So 
When somebody says they're going to do it to you for, for 200 bucks, 300 bucks, that's probably not worth the paper that's written, written on, unless they already got you lined up for, for, for a big um, repair bill, you know, or a big repair quirk. So, yeah, that's something to think about. Um, and then, yeah, lastly, this is just the information. Like I said, you you, you could be a, a one of these electricians, installation electrician, single place tester, master electrician, but you'd be working for a contractor. And they have a contractor number. Also, from the, you could find the part into flavor, the different number to the electrician's number. So, you fill in all that details here and the company details. And yeah. So that's the, that's basically the certificate of compliance. That's just capturing all that details. So I think uh, we will do another video. Then we'll unpack all the testing and what's involved there. It's definitely not an hour's testing, right? If if you think about all the things you need to do, just just taking some outlets, just checking your your earths. If it's copper pipes, you're gonna make sure they bonded. You know, you're gonna go in the ceiling, you're gonna check for open connections. Make sure that the earths are not twisted. And the main thing is, if anybody comes to your house and, and they're going to do an inspection, you need to open your distribution board and actually go see what's happening inside there, you know. Uh, yeah, we, we, we'll unpack that in another video.